Japan's navy is one of the world's largest and most capable. After over 70 years, it's gaining aircraft carriers once again. Its anti-submarine fleet is rivaled only by the US. Japan is also expanding its military funding by over 50% in the very near future. Yet given the fact its neighbor and potential adversary is China, is all that enough to have Japan's navy protect its homeland? Modern Japanese Navy is rearming as quickly as possible. It's not unlike the period before World War II when Japan was also making as many new ships as they could. Thanks to the sponsor of today's video, World of Warships, you can try commanding all those World War II behemoths of the seas. Not just a myriad of destroyers and cruisers, but also aircraft carriers as well as all the battleships, including the mighty Yamato. World of Warships is free to play, available on both PC and consoles. Binko viewers can also enjoy a huge starter pack. Download the game using my link and register using my promo code and you'll get a million credits, 200 doubloons, 7 days of premium account time as well as 2 high school fleet commanders. The new content is released monthly. The new ships, in-game nations to choose, there's US, Germany, UK and many other nations. Look at this beautiful map. There are over 40 maps available with new water effects and dynamic weather. I love that because every match is different. I had storms getting me out of impossible odds. There's over 600 ships faithfully modeled in-game. And ships need commanders. There are real historical commanders to recruit, as well as fictional faves. From November 16th through 30th, there's an in-game event collaboration between the World of Warships and the High School Fleet anime series. Remember, download the game using my link and register using the promo code HSF2023. You'll get all those goodies, including two High School Fleet commanders. While dismantled after World War II, Japan's navy was quickly rebuilt under the watchful USI as the first line of defense against Soviet presence in the Pacific. Anti-submarine warfare in particular was the focus of Japan's navy to counter the Soviet focus on the submarines. As US couldn't or didn't want to house most of its Pacific fleet in Japan, and as it needed a week or so to cross the Pacific from US to Japan, it was expected that the Japanese navy would initially do much of the heavy lifting in the opening week or two of the war against Soviets. And the same could be said about the role of Japan's navy today. It's still being kept as a numerous and powerful force, but now the focus is not Russia anymore, but China. China, however, is a different beast than the Soviet Union was. Soviets had roughly 40-something percent of their ships, naval aircraft and submarines focused on the Pacific. Today, Russia is a much smaller threat than the Soviets were. Back in the 1980s, the US and Japan saw China as an ally. By today, that changed and China is now seen as an adversary. And in the last several decades, China's military and China's navy in particular grew to be much stronger, easily a more dangerous opponent than the Pacific-oriented Soviet forces ever were. Japan's navy today still holds a large focus on anti-submarine mission, but it's also increasingly added anti-aircraft warfare destroyers, as well as planning to build dedicated anti-missile ships. The territory that has to be defended is fairly large, once all the islands are included. The southwest edge of the Ryukyu Islands is, for example, over 600 miles away from Japan's mainland, and only little over 200 miles away from China's mainland. The Japanese Navy operates from five main military districts and five major naval bases. Its aviation operates from several air bases. Given that Japan is tasked with surveying hundreds of miles away from its mainland, it's no wonder Japan has aircraft carrying ships. By that we mean helicopter carrier ships. Though two of the biggest ships, the Izumo class, have started a conversion process which will allow them to operate F-35B fighter jets, short takeoff and vertical landing stealthy jets. Izumo class ships are large, displacing 27,000 tons. Their original role was carrying various helicopters. Acting as sea control ships, they can use radars on helicopters to monitor the ocean surface and they can use anti-submarine helicopters to monitor the depths below. In addition, they can serve as air assault platforms, where transport helicopters can ferry troops. Up to 400 troops can be stationed on the ship when the sea control mission crews are not fully embarked. 
As mentioned, the conversion process to allow them to operate F-35s is underway. Right now, Japan does not have any F-35Bs. The first one are to be delivered in 2025, while the last of the 42 currently ordered might arrive in 2030 or so. For comparison, China currently operates two aircraft carriers, each displacing some 55,000 tons. China relies on 70 or so J-15s, variants of Soviet flankers, to operate from the carriers. Also, China's navy operates around a dozen helicopter-based early warning radar systems, sort of like poor man's AWACS. Japan's carriers don't have such dedicated radar platforms and have to rely on its Air Force's AWACS planes. Izuma conversion to jet fighter aircraft carrier is two-staged. The final stage will encompass internal changes as well as a whole new bow deck section, so the jets can take off more easily from the ship. The deck will be flat, without a ski jump ramp though. Izuma will enter its final conversion in 2025 and finish it by 2027. Its sister ship Kaga will finish its conversion by 2029. By then, most of the 42 F-35Bs should be delivered to Japan. For comparison, by 2029, China will have added a third aircraft carrier, the Fujian, which is a large 80,000-ton design. Some 36 fighter jets are likely for it, in addition to a dedicated fixed-wing AVAX plane, similar to the US E-2 Hawkeye, and dedicated jammer planes, similar to US Growler planes. The J-35 stealth fighter jet is also under development, and is likely to be in service by 2029 or so, likely serving alongside J-15s. That's a fairly serious force, so Japan's two carriers, each operating a dozen or so F-35Bs, might be outmatched in the open ocean, if they ever find themselves without US help. Japan also uses two smaller helicopter carriers of the Hyuga class. Displacing 19,000 tons, they're too compact to use F-35s, but they will still be a worthy addition for sea control missions. To compare, China does not have dedicated helicopter carriers, but it does have three large landing dock helicopter flat tops. The Type 075 class, which displaces close to 40,000 tons, though a good deal of its displacement is used for its well deck, as it's primarily an assault ship, like the US Wasp class, for example. Still, it's usually credited with being able to operate up to 28 various helicopters. Japan's assault ships could also serve as helicopter carriers. Its navy operates three Osumi-class landing dock helicopter ships. They're smaller, at just 13,000 tons, but they can operate eight helicopters on their flat-top deck. Only small helicopters can be lowered into the vehicle parking space, as the ship lacks a dedicated aviation hangar. Japan's navy isn't big on assault ships, though. Those three are the only such types. The Navy operates six LCAC hovercraft as well as eight other small landing craft, which, given how many faraway islands Japan has, is frankly way too few. If Japan does ever find itself in a situation where it can't count on US help, it may have a very hard time performing any sort of assault mission far away from its mainland. To compare, China has a much more robust amphibious assault fleet. Various small landing craft are too numerous to list, but just listing the larger landing ships shows the great disparity. But perhaps a more sexier part of any country's arsenal are various destroyers. Japan's biggest destroyers are its air warfare ships, carrying the US Aegis system. In total, eight ships derived from the US Burr class design. First class, the Congo, had ships commissioned in the 1990s, while the latest, the Maya class, is from 2020. Congos, being the oldest, lean onto the initial US Burke so much that they too lack a helicopter hangar. Other classes have them. All these ships typically operate one Seahawk helicopter. They sport eight dedicated anti-ship missile launchers. Japan's destroyers also fill 90 to 96 vertical launch cells using a variety of missiles, from quad-packed ESSMs for ships' self-defense to SM-2 missiles for long-range anti-air work. Anti-submarine rocket-propelled torpedoes are also launched from those VLS cells. SM-3 anti-ballistic missile interceptors are also an option, as Japan's destroyers have been upgraded to feature that capability as well. Japan is in the process of procuring the SM-6 anti-aircraft missile as well. Being a very new missile, which the US Navy only recently got, it can also be used for anti-ship and land attack roles. 
Finally, eight of Japan's Aegis destroyers will also get Tomahawk cruise missiles in the future. Originally, 500 new Block 5 Tomahawks were planned for delivery from 2026 onward. But now the plan changed to 400 Tomahawks delivered from 2025 onward, with half of them being the older Block 4 variant. In the future, Block 5A subvariant, if Japan procures it, may allow anti-shipping missions. China's biggest destroyers are their Type 055 class. At over 12,000 tons, they're really the size of some Cold War cruisers, which just shows the general trend of size increases and the futility of trying to shoehorn modern ships into old nomenclature. Those two sport very large radar arrays, roughly analogous to US Aegis, as well as a modern combat management system. Japan's Navy mid-sized ships are its anti-submarine warfare or general-purpose destroyers, usually displacing between 5 and 7,000 tons. Two Asahi and four Akizuki-class destroyers, as well as the four Mogami frigates, are the newest types, sporting very modern radars and electronic systems. They all generally have 32 vertical launch cells, though Mogami has just 16. And they use the said VLS for ASRock anti-submarine missiles, as well as quad-packed ESSM air defense missiles. That means the Mogami, for example, can use 8 ASRock missiles, as well as 32 ESSM missiles. In addition, they all sport 8 dedicated anti-ship missiles, as well as a helicopter. Japan's roster of older destroyers includes the 5 Takanami-class ships and 9 Murasami destroyers, in service since 1990s and 2000s. Those two have 32 VLS cells, 8 anti-ship missiles and a helicopter. Or two helicopters in Murasami's case. But their sensors and systems are generally older and not as competitive, lagging behind China's best and newest. China's comparable ships in the 5 to 8,000 ton range are numerous, specifically 33 more destroyers optimized for anti-air warfare, 31 of which sport Chinese Aegis equivalent systems as well as nine more destroyers of quite varying displacement, vintage and usefulness, some of which rely on nearly obsolete air defense missiles, but others, on the other hand, sport modern and potent anti-ship missiles. Japan's oldest ships are composed of Cold War remnants, the eight Asagiri-class destroyers, as well as six Abukuma ships, called destroyer escorts, but their tonnage and equipment is so anemic that most people would think they're corvettes. Asagiri has an octuple Sea Sparrow launcher for air defense, while Abukuma lacks anti-air missiles and a helicopter completely. Both have dedicated octuple ASRock missile launchers. Both types are being gradually retired, replaced by the new Mogami-class frigates. China, on the other hand, has numerous medium-sized ships, namely general-purpose frigates and dedicated anti-submarine corvettes. Type 054A frigate is notable there, as it uses a medium-range anti-air system, the HQ-16. Finally, when it comes to small attack craft, Japan uses six Hayabusa-class patrol craft. Those are tiny vessels, but they can carry four anti-ship missiles each. In today's warfighting doctrine, such attack craft are not deficient though, unless we are talking about specific defensive operations against an enemy that wants to blockade you or assault your shores. That's why China has been retiring their small ships and attack craft. They have 60 to 70 such boats, depending on how many have been retired by now. Mine warfare is also an important part of any navy, and Japan has a fairly large mine warfare fleet. Though again, China does have more. On the other hand, China does not seem to be using helicopters to counter mines. While Japan's navy does use some 10 large helicopters for said role, being large, those helicopters also serve for cargo transport. But before we go into naval aviation, let's stick with ships a little bit longer. Any navy that occasionally wants to send a task force a bit farther from its shores also has to have an underway replenishment fleet. Transport ships that can connect with combat ships while en route and send them fuel and various pelletite supplies. Large items like big missiles can't be supplied that way. Japan has five such replenishment ships, which are generally smaller than China's. That also leads to a smaller percentage of the Japanese Navy being supplied on the seas compared to China's fleet. Another indicator of the role of the Japanese Navy, which is to be a local, regional power. This total tonnage comparison, taking into account large ships listed so far, is telling. Japan's Navy, despite being in the top five most potent navies in the world, 
is half the size of China's navy. There are of course many more ships a navy has, support ships, survey ships, communication training and so on. Actually out of the training ships, two Hatakazi destroyers being retired from the frontline duty could in theory be put back into service, they still offer some punch. Training ships also extend to submarines, with two Oyashio submarines retired from frontline units and serving as training vessels. Oyashio are still modern submarines, with the first hulls commissioned in the late 1990s. Japan has always been at the forefront of non-nuclear fueled propulsion submarine designs, and their designs are one of the largest such submarines in general, designed for ocean-going missions if needed. While Oyashios have regular diesel-electric propulsion, the next class, Soryuz, advanced that to include air-independent propulsion as well. Generally, such submarines can stay underwater for a few weeks, running at slow speeds. But curiously, the last two Soryuz, as well as the new Taigei class, went back to diesel-electric propulsion only, but this time using newer generation lithium-ion batteries, which can probably rival the Stirling engine used in most Soryuz, underwater endurance-wise. China uses both nuclear-fueled propulsion and conventional propulsion for their subs. Not counting the six strategic missile subs, China has seven or so nuclear-fueled attack subs. Nuke subs are generally more capable than conventional ones, as they can stay submerged for months if needed, while going five or ten times faster, so they are tactically more useful. That being said, modern conventional subs can be as quiet and have as advanced sonars and torpedoes. China operates little under 50 conventional subs, of varying vintage and capabilities, with the B and C variant of their O39 class being modern and roughly comparable to newer Japanese conventional subs. Submarines are also an area where Japan plans high production rates, with future Taigei submarines being made at one boat per year. So far, five more Taigeis are planned, to replace the Oyashio class. Ships-wise, planned future hulls include eight more Mogami frigates, at a pace quite unusual for Japan, as many as two ships per year. But it seems that's just the start. After it, 12 more frigates, likely even slightly bigger, will be built at a breakneck pace, with all 12 being procured in a span of five years. Mogami and its successor are looking to end up being one of the most produced Japan's designs to replace all the older low-end ship classes. It all shows Japan is trying to keep up the pace with China, though again, without the US, it can't quite do it on its own. When it comes to medium-sized ships, no announcement for further hulls have been made yet, but the largest Aegis-equipped destroyers are already planned. Two more general-purpose anti-air destroyers will start construction soon, possibly derivatives of Maya design and famously two more Aegis-equipped very large destroyers will also be made, but optimized for ballistic missile defense role. While previously ideas of those ships displacing 20,000 tons were thrown around, it seems those plans have ultimately been curbed, with 12 or so thousand tons being mentioned. Still, they are supposed to have 128 VLS cells, with likely over half being dedicated to ballistic missile interceptors. The BMD destroyers have a wider role, going beyond just the Navy. They are to protect the entire Japan and all its military, not just the Navy. Unlike terminal stage interceptors, which Japan's army also has, the mid-course interception against intermediate-range ballistic missiles can be done only by large missiles such as the SM-3, fielded by the destroyers. Previously, Japan decided not to build Aegis ashore sites, possibly because shipborne platforms would be more survivable in a war. Speaking of missiles, those are important components of any modern navy. Anti-air missiles have already been mentioned, but anti-ship missiles are still used both by Japan and China on many of their ships. A lot of Japanese ships still use the Type 90 anti-ship missile, which is generally similar to the US Harpoon, though somewhat more modern due its 1990s vintage. Later, from 2015 onward, an improved design was fielded, first on coastal launchers and then a few years ago on some ships as well, as the Type 17. Being a modern missile, it features satellite guidance in addition to its advanced radar and it can receive waypoints and be redirected in flight. Future variants of the missile are also planned, increasing its range even further. 
While Japan also has a modern supersonic anti-ship missile, the ASM-3, it is technically not fielded within its navy. Rather, it's used by aircraft serving within Japan's air force. Future Japanese missiles include the already mentioned SM-6, sourced from the US, as well as a new surface-to-ship missile. It's still in research phase and prototypes aren't expected before the end of the decade, but it's likely going to be a subsonic stealthy winged cruise missile, somewhat similar to US Al Razm. A range of some 1200 miles has been mentioned as a requirement. Getting back to SM-6, it will be a welcome addition as well, given that it can basically serve as a small guided ballistic missile against moving targets. To compare, the Chinese Navy currently uses a wide variety of anti-ship missiles, from small helicopter-borne ones to advanced but larger harpoon analogs like the YJ-83. Those are mostly used in frigates and older destroyers. A small number of destroyers sport large and heavy YJ-12 supersonic missiles, as replacements for the huge Soviet musket missiles from the 1980s. The newest Chinese destroyers use the YJ-18 anti-ship missile, which is a variant of the Russian 3M54 concept with a supersonic terminal stage warhead. China also likely uses what's been called the YJ-21 anti-ship ballistic missile. Just to return to air-to-air -air missiles, Japan's navy is also developing a new SAM system, based on the Army's Type 3, but with a redesign and an added booster. Its range will likely be well over 100 kilometers, enough to replace SM-2 missiles on its destroyers. Its name is currently ASAM before it gets a proper designation. Japan also plans to expand its landing ship fleet. Currently, immediate plans call for one additional landing ship with a cargo capacity of 2,000 tons. That points to a ship the size of US Frank Besson class, for example. A few more small landing craft are planned alongside it. Almost a decade ago, there was a desire to buy one large LHD from the US. Nothing came of it possibly due to lack of slots in US shipbuilding or due to the fact such US ships displace 40,000 tons, too much for current Japanese needs. Japan never really cultivated a dedicated amphibious unit due to after-war politics. It was only in 2018 that the 1st Marine Brigade was formed, but under army command. Around 2019 it was however expected that the Navy would issue a request for a smaller landing dock helicopter type allegedly of around 20,000 tons, but so far nothing seems to be materializing. Further plans also call for 12 large offshore patrol ships, armed with just a small gun, but capable of operating a Seahawk helicopter. Such a vessel class would somewhat relieve the larger ships from mundane patrol duties. All those ships and missiles do cost quite a bit, but Japan has been increasing its defense spending. While Japan's Navy budget increases are unavailable, Overall, Japan's military budget increase plans are known. After initial announcement of almost doubling the budget, the new 5-year spending plan was recently announced. $320 billion are planned for 2023 through 2027, compared to previous 5 years from 2019 to 2023, that's an increase of 56%. Military Balance 2023 publication and Cypri Institute estimate that the Navy's piece of debt pie will be 32-33% to of the future total annual defense spending average, which is 60-something billion dollars. When it comes to naval aviation, Japan's Navy operates helicopters, dedicated anti-submarine warfare planes and some surveillance and transport planes. Anti-submarine assets is one area where Japan manages to outshine China, with more than double the number of such planes and more helicopters for anti-submarine duties. Domestic jet engine P-1 planes are replacing the older US source Orions, while locally made Seahawks, made under license, have reached a new generation K variant. Interestingly, those new Seahawks will not be replacing the earlier J variants one for one. Instead, a greater number of Sea Guardian drones will be procured in the future. Those are already operated by Japan's Coast Guard. Further aircraft include electronic signal gathering planes, transport planes, as well as various search and rescue planes and helicopters, including the Shinmaiwa seaplane. Japan's navy is, as we can tell, struggling to keep up with China's naval buildup on its own. Of course, realistically, it doesn't have to, as the US will be there. But even so, it's still holding its own in some areas. 
And if a fair chunk of China's navy, for example, ever gets tied up in operations around the island of Taiwan, then the remaining assets might not be enough to seriously threaten the Japanese Ryukyu Islands. Then again, war is always a broader game than just pitting navies versus navies. Rocket forces, air forces, intelligence gathering assets and so on all have a further say in outcomes of battles. But until the US gears up and sails across the Pacific, the Japanese Navy will remain as a pretty potent pillar of defense. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together. <laughs>